Rani joins us. And in this market, it's not only Dinshaw, everybody is smiling. So there's nothing new if you smile today, right? Everybody is smiling in this market. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. But so. the point is that how long will the smiles continue? Yeah, that's the right question, I think. Because, <laughs> uh, thank you for having me on your show. It's always a pleasure to come on your show. But anyway, so Nikunj, uh, the fact is India got re-rated, right? And re-rated big time also because uh, our average P's were 17, 18, and now we are at 23, 24 forward earnings, right? Now, for this re-rating to, I mean, the re-rating happened on the back of obviously the balance sheet is becoming stronger, the growth rates are becoming much more exciting. Uh, so to maintain that re-rating, one has to now, I mean, balance sheet still remains stronger, right? There's no issue on that. But the earnings growth have tapered off. In fact, in the last two quarters of reported earnings, uh, they're not supporting the kind of valuations we are at. So we are slightly concerned on that basis. And frankly, I mean, looking at September, uh, half the quarter is over, literally. I mean, rather more than half, uh, two thirds of the quarter is over. Doesn't look that exciting either. So it's it's obvious that you know there may be some stretches on certain pockets where uh, there's been a lot of uh, froth building up uh, as such. So we are concerned. Okay, Dinsha, uh, the correction in the defense and the railways and the PSUs and the shipyards has already started. How come nobody is talking about it? <laughs> we, we, we've been, we've been uh, actually been talking about this for a while. I mean, I don't know about others, but uh, what we did was uh, in the run up to the budget, we uh, sold off uh, quite a bit of PSUs. Uh, we sold off, in fact, in the oil and gas space, we sold off, uh, chopped off rather some uh, wages in defense. Uh, we had one railway stock, which was more of a, a tourism stock. We moved that out. So we've done our... Uh, I think uh, we got our shopping cart uh, down to uh, manageable levels as such. So I think uh, that's what we did uh, in the run-up. But frankly, I mean, as in the, they could look at the look at the what happened on twenty third, right? The budget uh, wasn't that exciting uh, for uh, the PSU space as such. There was a cut in spend, so it's obvious that this won't uh, uh, last for long. I mean, this this kind of a euphoria in that space. Uh, and uh, the spoiler was obviously the capital gains, and you saw that the FIs have been constantly uh, dumping after that. I mean, they've been buying in bits and pieces, but that's only when there's a uh, offer uh, available at a massive discount to, and that's an insider offer which is coming, which is anyway is not a good news for the markets. Uh, so only then they buy, otherwise they've been out of the market and they're remaining negative. I think the only thing supporting the markets today is obviously the domestic flows, uh, which continue to be fairly healthy. Dinsha, hi, morning. Wondering whether IT is the contract call that one should have jumped in on in the month of April. Now, of course, the index is at an all-time peak. But just wondering whether there's further headroom to go from here or not. Because, you know, the commentary from an LTI mine tree, from an HCL Technologies at their investor day, all seems to be pointing uh, to a demand recovery. So, Aisha, let me let you in on a secret. Actually, you would have seen our July end uh, uh, portfolio anyways. Uh, so, we turned constructive on IT after TCS is out. So actually, uh, I think TCS was an eye-opener. And frankly, I mean, for us, TCS is a bellwether because he's been calling, not calling out, but you, you've got to read between the lines when TCS is, uh, they never call out any, give out any numbers. Uh, but if you read between the lines, the fact that they added uh, to their employee strength and they uh, the, the call was also pretty uh, in sort of disdainful it was very uh, positively structured and stuff so we took away that hint and we started adding to that and frankly i mean look at look, so so when uh, when we are not too comfortable in markets normally money goes towards safety right uh, in the case of it uh, the stocks are available at half more than half the pe's of fmcg and the growth rates are better than the FMCG uh, bunches such. So it's obvious that this is for us at least, this is a place we can be very, uh, I mean, very easily uh, park our money and see some growth coming through. And especially in times when the markets are looking a bit uh, jittery to us. So it's better to be in a space which is going to give you a healthy return of 12, 13% in terms of earnings. And obviously the P's also very at sensible levels as such. They're probably at par with what they were earlier as such, so they were not re-rated. And frankly, I mean, that's not the only space. We also like uh, the non-lending non finance. I think that's another space that uh, uh, needs to be looked at. 
But you know, IT the logic was that okay, the sector is not growing and valuations are above their five-year average. Valuations never came below their five-year average. And what growth are we talking about? Eight becoming eleven or nine becoming twelve? And the stocks are up thirty, forty percent, right? <laughs> No, no, no. So, so nine becoming twelve itself is like a thirty-three percent growth, right? So, in terms of growth rate, you're splitting the hair, wali baat hai, right? I'm <laughs> splitting the hair, right? <laughs> no, there no, are a no. lot of other no, businesses no. where growth is fifteen, twenty percent, my friend. No, no, no. I'm, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. The fact is that uh, what we were concerned about was that the new technologies coming in uh, will create a problem for these guys, and obviously, I mean. The more you look at it, the more you hear these guys, it's obvious that AI and generative AI and all these guys are going to add to their businesses rather. So that's one area that you need to look at. And frankly, I mean, uh, Nikunj, you're right in the sense that uh, 12 may become 14, 15, right? Because 12 is right now what the estimate is. And frankly, I mean, none of these management, but HCL Tech yesterday uh, finally uh, gave some kind of indication that medium term looks pretty healthy. They didn't call out the short term, immediate short term, but they called out the medium term looking uh, fairly good. So one can probably see that the growth rates may come back to their mid to high teens as such in this case. And that's why I think uh, this is the time to be in a sector where you, you're sure of the growth. And frankly, I mean, uh, the valuations are also in sync with what you've seen. You talked about the last five year averages, Obviously, the five-year average has had a COVID period where the valuations just saw through the roof, right? But if you look at the pre-COVID period, they were at 19, 20, and they are at 23, 24 times forward earnings as such, which is fairly okay for us, I think. Other than IT, wondering where else uh, would you have added positions in the last three months? So I won't give out the names, uh, Aisha, but obviously we used to hold one IT uh, stock, which was uh, into... Uh, uh, the automation space, I mean, as in the auto space. So that we added to, plus we added to the heavyweights in IT uh, and uh, we picked up a few more names beyond that also as such. So uh, probably five odd names and obviously the platform companies, uh, which we believe are IT uh, companies as such, there again, we've increased our exposure uh, to that extent. So if to buy something, you have to sell something. What did you sell? So as I said, we 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 cashed out a bit on uh, uh, on the PSU space. So we had that money lying with us, and that's why we got there. Uh, we uh, chopped a bit, or rather trimmed a bit on the tourism space because we thought there was a lot of fraud building up there. Though we continue to be very bullish there. Uh, in defense, we chopped a bit, and uh, yeah, that's how we made our cash as such. So, and fortunately, uh, mutual fund you don't need to sell sell anything to buy anything. It's the money keeps flowing in, so you keep buying new stocks, which you like. So that way, uh, that used to be the case in our PMS, where we have to sell something to buy something. Ninja, one big moving part would be interest rates will come down. Globally, hopefully locally. Now, purists would say interest rates are like gravity. When they go up, valuation should go up or down. And when interest rates go down, valuation should go higher. Are we looking at this reversal at play, whether it is for commodities or for high growth companies that now impact of low interest rate would be visible in terms of valuations. So actually, Nikunj, I think that uh, consensus trade is already paid out. I think it's a, it, I won't be too surprised if it's a sell on news once the interest rates start getting cut out there and depending on what aggression they come up with, but I don't think they're going to be too aggressive in the first space because uh, as I've already pointed out earlier, both, uh, even if, uh, say, so, so, either of the two candidates, if they come up uh, as such, uh, Kamala or uh, Donald Trump, they're going to be both inflationary for the economy. As well. So I think uh, Fed is going to just give out a token cut and probably wait out uh, what the new policies are and before taking aggressive cuts. Our feel is the aggressive cuts can only start in by the end of this year or uh, say beginning of next year as such. That's when the real uh, kicker will come in. And in the case of India per se, uh, the real interest rates have been very high all along. And that's why we always believe that uh, the private sector uh, given there's a paucity of demand and the fact that the real interests are so high, they will not undertake a capex at this point in time. They wait for these rates to come down, uh, demand to pick up. Uh, one big indicator would be when RBI starts infusing some liquidity into the system as such. Uh, despite sucking out uh, the liquidity, you can see the pressure on the rupee uh, on a regular basis. I think that's one thing that has to be looked out for uh, before taking a call on uh, interest rate sensitive in India. Dinshaw, when you see the market 
from the lens of safety apart from it where else do you think there is safety with uh, decent growth so one area that we've been always bullish on nikunj and we continue to be bullish on is obviously right now i mean bullish as in i'm talking about a medium to long term is the banking space but in the non lending space of financial services i think that's a fantastic area to be in though the valuations are uh, looking a bit stressed out there but i think there are pockets which are still giving you good growth uh, and which continue to give you good growth as such so i think that is one area that one needs to look at and frankly i mean if you look my look at my financial services uh, fund uh, i think banking space is around 60 65% the rest all is services and probably we are one of the few who has around 24 25% exposure in small caps in uh, the financial services front so that's what is uh, uh, exciting to us and i think we keep finding new ideas out there and frankly i mean as i said there are a lot of options even in the platform companies in that space uh, so let me wait here companies are offering margin of safety then sure and we are discussing how stock like policy fintech and and paytm Two years ago, they were at bombed out valuations, right? Ten cents sold their stake in Policy Bazaar or PB FinTech at four hundred, and today they've sold at seventeen hundred. So what has changed? So I think basically this is the way to go. So what do you look for in a platform company? Because one, they have to be globally uh, established. Uh, Uh, formulas right so that's most of the pb uh, for, uh, sorry most of the uh, domestic plays which are successful are go- globally established uh, plays secondly uh, is the convenience being offered yes most of them offer conveniences right uh, secondly is it encashable convenience and is it mass and encashable it is right and are they easily replicable they're not that is the big question i think and that's why we don't like certain uh platform companies which we believe are easily replicable and uh, that's why we're very clear on those which are uh, not easily uh, replicable as such and those are the companies that we want to be in you named a few of them uh, obviously uh, we continue to be there uh, in fact one of them we've added weight to uh, recently given that the regulator has been uh, regulatory action has taken a uh vaccine and the regulator has been fairly benign towards that particular where where he came down heavily earlier uh, he's been fairly benign now and i think things are looking pretty ripe out there they are they show always good having you on the show and hope the smiles continue it will thank you <laughs> okay if you like this video then like share and subscribe to et now 